Today I'm in the mood for a celestial type of makeover and this Gen 3 Draculaura doll is going to help me with that. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Dolls Unbox, where I unbox dolls and also do makeovers. This is my second ever doll makeover and Gen 3, because why not? I have a lot of Gen 1 dolls, but I thought I would use Draculaura Gen 3 for this doll makeover. First of all, I have to start with removing her hair and her makeup. And to remove the hair, I am going to dunk her in some water. I have to say the plugs of the Gen 3 dolls are really, really stuck. It's like the hair is burned inside the head. I can't quite explain it, but it has these very tough nibs at the end that are inside the head that keep the hair from falling out. You can also use a screwdriver, but I found that this rounded end of my tweezers are very good at removing the hair from the scalp when it's hot and warmed up from the water. Time to remove the makeup. I start with a q-tip. I don't know why I should have just used a cotton bud, but here we go. Let's remove the makeup. This doll was quite the journey to work on, so she was meant to be something completely different. I wanted to make this Draculaura into a porcelain doll, a white porcelain doll with blue painting on her body. And I will still do this at some point, but not with this doll and not with a pink doll. I will just pick a white doll and I have a few in mind for that. This is why there is orange hair to start with, but she doesn't keep her orange hair. I will chop that off in not too long from now and also white hair and blue. So the blue and white will go nicely with the pink, but she was going to be white in the end. So I tried my best with chalk pastels and Mr. Super Clear and chalk pastels and Mr. Super Clear. But eh, after five layers, I gave up and she was just going to be a very pale pink doll. So here you can see me going ahead with the rooting of her orange hair and all the other colors as well. And this orange, I have no idea where it actually came from because I bought a lot of dolls and this orange hair came in that lot. So uh, I tested it beforehand and it was okay with hot water and hot products. So that was all fine. And the white and the blue, my lovely friend Marjorie from Unbride Artistry has sent these colors to me and they are from Custom Doll Hair on Etsy here in Western Australia. Of course, filling up the neck hole with Fabri-Tec glue and swishing that around with a Q-tip. As this doll was going to be nude or mostly nude, I had to send off her underpants and all the other markings that are on her body, like the left and right arm and leg and all that kind of stuff. So with a Dremel, I just try and send off as much as I can and try to send it with um, a sending block as well by hand. And you can see it's all off here and she is ready for all the pastels that I'm going to throw at her. I try and yeah, it does not really work out the way I want it to, but it's okay. You know, it's a learning curve. It's only my second doll and um, yeah, you, you try and you, you live and you learn, I suppose. So she's very pale now, but we're going to change it up because I'm going to replace the orange with this purple. So I have to go back and take all the pins out, take a hair out of the wrap cut off the orange hair and plug it with the purple. My husband got me this purple hair from, I think it was from AliExpress. However, it is meant for BJD dolls and it's a really, really lovely hair. It's super soft and basically the same quality as the other two that I'm using and also heat resistant. So I'm repainting this orange. I took the orange off, but it left a stain because it's um, Vallejo model paints. They're really good for these doll paintings and because they, they're kind of flexible and they kind of stay in place uh, when you're rerouting. So a dark color base and then rerouting it with that light purple. So this completely changes up the entire look for this doll and I had to rethink on what I was going to do with her. 
I have decided on making her a dream weaver. And let me tell you a little bit of a backstory behind this idea. Selina wasn't born under a moon. She was woven from it. For as long as anyone in the Twilight Realm can recall, she has existed as a dream weaver, an ethereal being with a skin like the first blush of dawn and hair that mirrors the moonlit sky. Unlike her kin, who use starlight to weave dreamscapes, Selina possesses a unique talent. From the shimmering threads of moonlight itself, she can conjure a special dream thread. This isn't your average dream stuff. It shimmers with an otherworldly glow and holds the power to not just create fantastical landscapes, but to weave emotions and experiences directly into the dreaming mind. Imagine a young girl plagued by nightmares. Selina, with a gentle touch, weaves a dream of a luminous butterfly, its wings tracing constellations that soothe anxieties and replace fear with wonder. Or perhaps a weary traveler lost in a desolate landscape might find themselves running through fields of dream thread flowers, each bloom bursting with renewed energy and a sense of direction. Selena's gift isn't about creating whimsical dreamscapes. It's about using dreams to heal, inspire, and empower. One night, as Selena weaves a tapestry of confidence for a young boy facing a difficult challenge, a tear rips through the veil that separates the twilight realm from the waking world. Curiosity, a trait not often found amongst dream weavers, blooms in Selena's chest. Drawn by the unknown, she slips through the tear, a single spool of dream thread clutched in her hand. Landing softly in a world bathed in moonlight, Selina finds herself far from the familiar twilight realm. This new world, vibrant and bustling, is unlike anything she's ever known. Here, she can use her gift not just for her own kind, but for all who dream under the moonlit sky. It's a daunting, exhilarating prospect, and Selina, the dreamweaver with moonlight in her hair and dreams in her hands, knows her true adventure has just begun. I hope you like this little story and background behind this doll. I think I will do this more often for the dolls to come in the future because it's fun to uh, to make this thing up. Anyway, let's get back into what I'm creating here. I have done the most of the makeup and you can see there's yellow in the inner corners of her eyes. And whilst this is a really cool contrast with the uh, purple and the magenta, I remove it in the end because she actually looks like she's very sleep deprived and this might be a good look for this doll, but it's not what I was going for. Just adding some highlights around the mouth and the chin and the nose and then I'm going to move on to creating her eyes. The video might jump around a little bit because I tried very hard to concentrate on what I was doing here with the eyes. I wanted them to look right and uh, this sculpt I have to say uh, is very good if you want to give it all very hooded eyelids very nice sculpt for that type of doll. So that's what I try to achieve with the dark purple makeup. course she needs to have some nice and fancy nails. I start with a black acrylic but I got over with a, a like an iridescent kind of purpley color which is very nice and I also put that on her toenails as well. Now I'm not a seamstress, I, let's just admit it, I, uh, I'm i not, but I'm trying. So uh, from this, what is it, sari silk, and it's, it, it 
changes color. It's like a purpley pink magenta -y kind of color like I did with the eyes. And then I found this fabric in my stash, which was just perfect. So I started with the top and then I gathered the top that goes around her neck there and I wanted to add something extra. And then I had this shimmery tape. It's not tape, it's a ribbon in my stash. And I thought this would be perfect for this doll. And I made a skirt as well, which I uh, hemmed as well with the, no, not hemmed, um, these sewing terms, they, they uh, go beyond me. I lined it with <laughs> white fabric and I also make like a, it's, it's not a bustle, it's like a teardrop shape at the back as well. And uh, yeah, I am going to sew some studs here so the the dress is removable if you wanted to do so. I will have this doll in my store once this video goes up. So that is my Kofi store, not my Etsy store. And here I'm going to do something with her hair. So this is where it's still wet, but I gave her a boil wash and oh my goodness, that is so scary to do that on a just newly made doll. It, it gives anxiety. Here I am crocheting a shawl that is not going to be with the doll. However, I did make it for this doll and I just thought it didn't really go with her outfit. So this shawl and other ones are available in my Kofi store as well. If you wanted one for your, your doll, they're all handmade. And with the shimmery paint, I add some veins coming from her feet. Also like a little bit like moonlight strands and just going up her calves there. And I also add some to her face in that same luminescent kind of color. It's like purpley, it's acrylic paint. So it will stay on there forever. So quite a change from what my initial idea was for this doll to now having a celestial type doll, but I am really happy with how she's turning out. This is the teardrop back of the dress that I was talking about. And with that same acrylic paint again, I'm going to go in and add some swirls and also with some studs, I will add some nice shimmery details. I just thought it needed a little bit extra and um, a little bit more detail. So here we are. and also adding some of those rhinestones to the front of the dress. The silver cuffs that I'm putting around her wrists and her ankles are more than just ornaments. They are a very important part of her dream weaving process. They act as channels for the moonlight thread, allowing Selena to control its flow with precise movements. Onto her hair, I found it very difficult to come up with what to do with her hair. I mean, she looks nice with her hair down and I suppose the person that receives her can always decide to do that. This hair can be styled, there's no product in it. I decided not to do that at all. So I suppose I kind of went for an elvish half updo with multiple ways of it being bound back and also some braids at the side. So you will see that me do that in just a second. I braid that blue part and then I braid uh, the white part on the right hand side and bind that back as well. And then a third bind back and then I put some silver elements in there too and some chains. So you'll see me go back and forth a little bit with where the doll sits and what I'm doing with the hair. That is because she kept moving around and I need to learn to do the hair before I pop the head back onto the body so I can just put it on the stake and do it like that. Here we have the updo, the hair is super soft and very, very shiny and pretty, just like what I wanted for her. 
and it joins in very nicely with her body and her makeup. But now I wanted to add some extra detail by adding some chains and some silver elements to her hair. Chains are very fiddly to put in, so I first put some jump rings in her hair and then I add the chain on the side there, just like so. And then with two pliers, I close the rings and uh, then you add the chain like that. And uh, it worked out. It was a bit fiddly and just if you ever attempt it, just take your time for that. I wanted to give her like a little tool belt, not really a tool belt. The only tool she has is little spools with thread. So with my 3D printer, which I very sparingly use for any of my projects, only for tiny elements that I think would look better if I would 3D print them. So I drill a little hole and put a uh, ring, a loop pin. I don't know what they're called. Anyway, in there and we have a spool of dream thread then add some wood glue and put the thread around the spool and it's basically ready to be hung on a little belt and the belt sits basically on top of her skirt but underneath that leaf thing that sits at her back so um yeah here we have the belt that i will put around her and let's have a look what the final doll looks like and here she is. I am so proud of this doll and it took a completely different direction of where I thought I was going to go with this doll. But I'm happy it did because um, I made something from my own imagination uh, without any images beforehand because I like to have a plan before I start a doll. Anyway, here she is, Selena Dreamweaver, and she's available in my coffee shop if you are interested in purchasing her, giving her a new home. And she comes with her spools of thread, of course. And like I said before, the shrugs for the dolls are also available in my coffee store. And you can also support me on Kofi if you're interested in doing that kind of thing. I want to thank you all for watching. Stay safe, like, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye.